Well, good evening, and thanks once again for joining me. Now, tonight's message I've entitled, The Law of Sin. You know, I was asked the other day a question. With all that's going on over there in Ukraine with the war and the hurt and the suffering, if God is good, why does this happen? Why does God allow bad things to occur? You know, it's not a new problem. What's referred to as the problem of evil. Many have wrestled with it. Even we find it in the Bible. First, we must understand that God sees. God sees. God is not unaware of what is taking place. The Lord sees the path that people are on, whether good or bad, righteous or wicked. And with freedom, we are free to choose and go down our own path, whether it's right or wrong and ends up with a positive or negative consequence. God allows us the freedom to choose. The world is not set up where we would be robots blindly following orders and going along with God's commands. For love cannot be forced. It involves choice, choosing. And so even from the very beginning, we see this freedom to choose, even if it meant going against God. And that's what we see played out in the Bible. The freedom to choose, to walk a path, whether it be righteous or wicked. and It's decided by the individual. It's influenced by faith. We see that there's a power of influence. This is another point that we should understand. That we can be influenced by faith or by fear, and both can cause us to act. And wars are fought by men and women who are influenced by some person or principle to follow. The group together, they join together to fight under the influence. The Lord sees. He allows freedom to choose. The freedom of choice and with that comes proponents individuals who are for a certain path and opposed to others the individual knows that ideas are powerful that people can be turned by ideas make a case win an argument sell the idea and get people to buy in gaining their support towards a cause or effort. Then you don't have just one walking a path, but you have acquired others to walk that same path with you. With a powerful idea, people are acquired, loyal followers to the idea, and that is power. That is powerful. With enough people, mob rule can be obtained by sheer numbers, forcing the will of the majority and silencing out any opposition of the minority. Before long, you have widespread tyranny. God sees the path that humanity takes. He sees the course that mankind ignorantly and blindfully repeat. And wickedness springs up like a weed, looking to take over. Jesus, in the parable of the weeds, said, While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. We must be conscientious of the, enemy, the enemy's effort. What the enemy does the enemy does things when we are resting, resting on our laurels, resting. When we grow complacent, resting. The enemy does things when we are resting. 
when we are unaware the enemy does things. When we have our eyes shut and closed to the important topics and issues, when we have our eyes shut, the enemy does things. The enemy does things when we are in the dark, whether it be ignorance or just plain blindness to look at the things at hand. The enemy does things when we are in the dark. And the enemy does things when we have our guard down. The enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat while everyone was sleeping. The weeds are among us with the ability to spread and take over. They propagate an idea that influences all the enemy has to do is sow an idea, get others to go along with it, and then step back and walk away. Someone once said, those who forget history are condemned to repeat it. Wars have been fought and are still being fought for freedom over tyranny. Each side believes they are fighting for a higher purpose an ideal, an idea. Why do people go along with fighting for tyranny, for oppression, for evil? Why, for instance, did soldiers fight for evil regimes like the Communist Party of Stalin and, and Mao? Or why did they join forces with Hitler's Nazi war machine? or Putin's army of today. They have been influenced by faith or by fear and have made the choice to buy into an ideal, an idea. The enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. There's this power struggle that exists, a dynamic that is being played out a war against good and evil. A war between good and evil. Both the wheat and the weeds grow together. And it's important for us to understand that it's not just external. It's not just outside. It's not just miles away in Ukraine or in the corruption that takes place all around us. But it's also internal. There's an internal struggle. We are all capable of committing crimes. We might tell ourselves, I'd never go along with tyranny. I'd never be a soldier in Hitler's Nazi party and participate in executing millions of lives. However, these soldiers most likely never dreamed that they too would be in that position and carry out those atrocities. They gradually moved into carrying out that role in time. Just as weeds gradually grow and take over. It began with an idea. Propaganda was spread. That was said to Germany through its individual and influential leaders. Those who had seemed to rescue Germany out of the darkness of an economic decline and had exceeded expectations to an economic boom, a time of great wealth and prosperity enjoyed by its citizens. These were those who were influential and spread an idea, this propaganda. National pride was established and accepted. Feelings of superiority and greatness began to be instilled and uh, de developed a sense of grandiosity, which was felt sweeping all across the land. And leaders were not only being looked up to, but they were seen as a savior. A savior complex developed where the leader was looked at as a savior, a celebrity, a figure to be worshipped. For it was 
he that saved the nation out of ruin and darkness and had led it to these prosperous times. And with his ideas of grandeur, he shaped the land and the minds of its citizens. He paved a path that brought joy and pleasure to its people. Surely it was thought that the leader would bring utopia. This is what the people thought. This leader will bring a utopia. This great ideal, this great vision. They were enjoying their wealth. They were enjoying the lifestyle that it provided. They were living with this leader in power. They enjoyed this lifestyle that was given to them. All this wealth that uh, allowed them to prosper. And this leader, he brought fresh new ideas that would turn the nation into a powerhouse. Bringing the nation to the limelight and placing it on the world stage. But the leader told his people in order for the nation to continue to climb to its heights, its destiny, it must return to its roots, its original heritage. It must be pure. Made up of the pure race, the pure Aryan race, the leader told the people. The leader had proclaimed that returning to its roots would usher in this utopia that would allow uh, humanity to to arrive to its superior power that would put in place this superior race to lead the world in its destin, destiny and its advancement. A cleansing, this leader said, must commence. The cleansing must, must commence for the world to reach its zenith. The pure race was, according to this espoused belief, was a smarter race, a stronger race, a faster race, and excelled at every possible skill because of their genetics. Humanity, said the leader, needs to take this leap to move forward. And so with an idea that all other races were seen, seen as unclean, as less than, as dirty, as unqualified. The people bought in to this idea. They bought into this idea of differences. The people bought into the idea of pure versus impure. They bought into the idea of beauty and perfection versus ugly and broken. And they bought into this idea of superior and inferior. The idea, the idea separated them into classes, which eventually led to this looking for an enemy, some scapegoat to place the blame. And that was found with the Jews. The Jews would become the enemy, that scapegoat to place the blame. You know, we might tell ourselves, but I'd never go along with it. I could never fall for such an idea and be influenced by propaganda. I could never put on the uniform. I could never push the button. I could never swing the sword. I could never scream crucify and nail to the cross all that is good and beautiful and right in the world. I could never do that for a false narrative and a false ideology of the people. I could never. What we need to know is that the evil does not just exist on the outside, but is also found on the inside. That we are capable of doing all sorts of manners of evil. That we are capable, and that is truly frightening. That inside of us all is the capability and the capacity because of our sinful nature. That there's a war going on and 
not just outside and the external, but there's a war on the internal and the inside of us. That there's two principles at work. Two principles or laws, as the Bible refers to it as, that are at work inside of us. We first see that there's the law of the mind. The law of the mind, this is what the Apostle Paul refers to. The law of the mind, that we don't understand the things that we do sometimes. How many times have we said or did something out of character? We say to ourselves, I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just said that. The Apostle Paul said the same thing in Romans chapter 7 verse 15. I do not understand what I do. I believe this could be referred to as the law of the mind or the principle of the mind that we do stuff. Where it just seems to come out of nowhere. We do things that are out of character. We do not understand what we do. There is this sin problem. Sin living in us. It tells us there in Romans chapter 7 verse 17. There's a sin problem. Sin living in us. It shapes our thoughts and leads to actions that goes against God's law. We do evil and keep doing it. We don't want to, but we do it anyways. This is the law or what's known as the sin principle. We have inside of us this want or desire to do good alongside of the presence of evil. Now this uh, Native American proverb uh, said that uh, he, uh, this chief of the tribe was uh, with his son and uh, his son was asking him this, this same issue uh, about this uh, good and evil that it was inside of him. And, uh, the chief uh, elder, his father, told him that there's two wolves inside of you. One's good and one's evil. And the young lad, his son, asked, oh, Father, Chief, which one wins? And the chief, his father, responded to him, saying, Son, it depends on which one you feed. Here Paul is talking about these laws, these principles that are at work inside of us, that we have this want, this desire to do good alongside of this of the presence of evil. That we are composite beings. That there's a mixture of both inside of us. We have our values, our high ideals, our views and standards. And yet there is something that is alive, working inside of us, that goes against uh, uh, these ways. And it, it wages war against our highest principles and values that we have put in place. This war inside of us attacks our minds and keeps us held captive to our lower nature, the things we see as a defect of our character. We discover this division that's inside of ourself. And with that, we discover to our need that we have a need to be rescued from this internal war that plays out inside of us. Romans 7 verse 24 and 25 Paul asked the question who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? And then he gives a praise, a thanksgiving. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I pray this message has uh, given you some, some clarity, uh, has been able to give you uh, some 
assurance, confidence of the things that are taking place outside the world and things that take place inside of ourselves. Let us praise God for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our great Redeemer, who is our Rescuer, who is our Deliverer. Let us give Him praise. And let us be those people who can continue to go out, make a difference by bringing and instilling good in the world. Amen. I pray this message has been a blessing to you, and I pray that you have a blessed rest of the week. Until next time, bye-bye.